our hero awakens. Last thing he remembers is the brawl he had with the Duplaghost. He was alone. None of his partners were with him. He had no idea yet of the prank that was played on him yet. And so our hero readjusts his badges and... Uh, I'll be perfectly honest, I cannot keep this narration line up anymore. Mario is the victim of identity theft and Chapter 4 went from get the crystal star and save the village to um, uh, get our identity back. By the way, we don't have the fourth crystal star, even though the game just told us we did. So, off we go. This chapter will now turn into a wild goose chase to get Mario's identity back. Let's have some fun. Okay, so Mario is by himself. Obviously. No partners to help him. So, the normal player at this point of view, and I can tell us from my own experience and watching other people play this game, is to avoid enemies. But because I'm so elite, I'm not going to avoid the enemies. At least here in the forest, I'm going to avoid the hyper Goombas. But, well, Quake Hammer will completely destroy the hyper clefts, which I'll just go ahead and use right now. Piece of cake. And if you have a, um, a Power Plus on, yeah, that's named the Badge Power Plus, the uh, Crazy Daisies, and Single Spin Jump, we'll take some right out. Woohoo! That could be a problem. The Hyper Goombas are actually one of the biggest threats to Mario right now. Mario can't just simply disable them like the Hyper Claps, and while a Spin Jump with the Power Plus can take them on one turn, in that case, that stupid flying Parrot Goomba has a life shroom. And they're both gonna charge, aren't they? Sigh. Ha! Everyone put money in the pot to what Marlo Luigi is leveling up! Come on, place your pets, place your bets, badge points! What else?
I always love that crazy daisy, just due to the layout. Oh, what's in this item block again? Gah! I have too many items. That crazy daisy there always just kind of gets hung up on that, like, side of the brush or bush. And it's just due to the design of the level, and thank goodness a good enemy set. Me run over and get whatever was in here then. It's a coin block! <laughs> you make a very poor Mario impersonation because Mario doesn't talk. <laughs> Why he decided to expose his weakness is beyond me, but, um... I'd like everyone to just take a look carefully at the character as I'm allowed to choose. I'm not going to point it out this time, but I'll point it out next time that there's a specific character missing. I'm not taking a good guess right now because I, honest to God, can't think of anything creative to put in there. Alright, so, looks like I'm screwed over and I'm stuck battling this guy. He told me no running. So, let's try pulling out my big guns. Double Ice Smash! Let's start to freeze him. That did nothing. Wow. <laughs> that was a very productive first turn. Well, maybe I can knock him over. Eh, Rano. Alright, Slick, we gotta think of some other things to do. Another productive turn. Uh, knock him asleep? Let's try that. Still nothing. Can't help but notice neither of us can do damage to each other. Uh, I don't feel like using any of these items. Um, how about I try attacking them with something that isn't me, like Earth Tremor? Let's try that. My runaway isn't sprayed out. Um, let's try running away! Hey, that's something I can do. It worked! Okay. So I'd like to ask you if you saw an outline of somebody who you knew, would you be suspicious about said outline? I guess I can't personally answer because I've never seen an outline of one of my friends just walking all over the place. But, uh, everyone in town is all about how heroic and marvelous and amazing Mario is, and except that guy. And despite the fact that we shouldn't really be recognized by anyone in the town, well, first off, this guy is appearing again in the chapter. Look at that. We shouldn't be recognized by the shopkeeper. Alright, but yet, I'm still able to go into their inventory and ransack it at free will. I just personally think that's a slight programming uh, mishap. I personally think, like, you should be booted out of the shop for trying to do that. Or that it should be temporarily locked while this is currently happening. And, uh... The 
fact that we can't be recognized over right now is going to work very strongly in our favor. First off, I would like to once again prove you cannot sequence break in this game by trying to go into this pipe. Not that you would be able to sequence break anywhere, but... Um, I can't write no name, uh, or Mario can't write no name on his underwear, or <laughs> anything of the sorts. Null, void, none of those will work, so he's kind of stuck here, or taking a car back home. Um, we haven't even seen a single car in this game, have we? Fudge! Alright, um, to progress, we have to find the Super Baba, which is in one of these bushes. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Because we cannot be recognized, we can walk right up to our enemies and converse with them. So, why don't we do this with Vivian? Help her out. And so, we get a new partner, or one of our enemies, what do you know? The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Or occasionally, you know, a curse can become a blessing, as has been proven many times in this Let's Play, a curse can become a blessing. Uh, Vivian fills in the role of being able to hide from enemies, as you can very clearly see, and it can be used in battle, which means we finally have a means to avoid those charged attacks other than super guarding, thank goodness. Oh, by the way, Every single one of Vivia's attacks set enemies on fire. That alone makes her one of my favorite party members. Just that alone, being able to set every enemy on fire. It's way too fun. So, let's do more stuff on the next episode of Let's Play Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. This has been Miles Luigi. Oh, and by the way, Vivian's a girl in this version of the game. No ifs, ands, or buts, okay? See you next time.